uh, money accounting students this is mr chalke if you're watching this you are definitely at the right place please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking that subscribe button on your bottom right and once you're done with that you can definitely make sure that you leave your comments on the comment section uh, for today's or this morning's lessons we are going to focus on uh, the ordinary share dividends account this is one of the accounts that i feel like most students struggle with and it is the most simplest account to complete so i'm going to show you how you are simply uh, supposed to do this account here we are told that use the given information of Davy LTD to draw up the following ledger accounts for the year ended 30 June 2014. If we know that our year is ending on 30 June 2014, we know that it will automatically start on 1 July and end on 8. Uh, Knowing your financial period is very important. Okay, this is one of the information that is going to make life easy for you. And then <clears throat> now we are required to do the ordinary share dividends. Um, you need to know firstly, what type of account are you dealing with? If you remember from my previous lessons when I was explaining, I said that ordinary share dividends, it is an expense account. So if it is an expense account, it means that it increases on the debit side so every time ordinary share dividends increases our record on the debit side and then it will be reduced on the credit side okay very important now the next thing that you need to remember is what are you going to put in the ordinary share dividends number one uh in the ordinary share dividends we are going to put the bank the reason why we're going to put the bank it is because we are going to uh we are going to pay interim dividends so we will use uh, the bank account to pay for that and then the next thing that you are also going to need is the shareholders for dividends all that for dividends. this simply means this is the promise that we are going to make to the shareholders at the end of the day okay so meaning that these are the shares that are going to be declared at the end of that particular year, but we're not necessarily going to pay them at that time when we are declaring them. And then when I proceed with the lesson, I will explain to you why we are declaring those shares, but recording them as if it is an expense. And then also you are going to need to use the appropriation account. The appropriation account is for um, using it for explaining how you're going to distribute your profit so whatever that we're going to record here is going to be transferred to the appropriation account and remember that at the end of the year this ordinary share dividends account should be offset now the question will be how do we offset it we offset it by transferring the total to the appropriation account okay so now since we know what we are going to include how the structure is looking like we can then look for transactions that are going to help us now whenever you are dealing with ordinary share dividends you always need to be aware of the number of shares that the company has at that particular time when shares are either paid or declared okay so now here they're saying that davis ltd has an authorized share capital of two million five hundred thousand uh, ordinary shares which means that um, they are only allowed to issue 2,500,000 shares. Anything more than that will not be allowed. Okay. And they are telling us that on the 1st of July, they issued 1,500,000 shares. For us, we are interested in the number of shares that they are having at that particular time when we start our year. Okay. So we know that at the beginning of July 2011, they had 1,500,000 ordinary shares. And then if you go through the information, you realize that there was nothing else that was issued up until uh, on the 1st of November, I think 2013. That's when they started to issue the new shares. Now, <clears throat> what you need to do is to check for, um, how many shares were available when the first dividends were paid, when the interim dividends were paid in the first bargain in our current financial year here they're saying that on the 1st of october 2013 the company paid and declared an interim dividend of 14 cent per share now we know that since they had a uh, 1,500,000 ordinary shares 
um, on the 1st of July 2011 and nothing else was issued at that time up until the 1st of November. This will then mean that the number of shares that we are going to use to declare uh, to, to, to declare and pay the interim dividends will be on 1,500,000 ordinary shares. So we're going to say um, we're going to say 1,500,000 shares here on the 1st of October 2013. You're going to say um, 1,500,000 shares multiplied by 0 0.14, which means for each and every share that was issued at that particular time, you were only paying 14 cents for it. And then you need to understand which accounts are affected whenever an ordinary share dividend is paid you debit the expense okay which is your ordinary share divid, uh, your ordinary share dividends and then you credit your bank which means if i go on the credit side of my bank account i'm expecting to get ordinary share dividends uh, on the credit side and then when i go to my ordinary share dividends on the debit side i'm expecting to get my bank account which is what we have here so let's quickly look at that um one million five hundred thousand multiplied by zero point fourteen <clears throat> multiply by uh, one million five hundred thousand multiply by you can just say fourteen divided by hundred because it is fourteen percent we are getting 210,000 which means that in the current financial year we paid 210,000 for the uh, interim dividends which is the dividends paid another word for it is dividend paid and then from there you're also going to check Hore, on how many shares did we declare the final dividends okay now we're going to look into that so that we can be able to to get our information so here they're telling us that um remember i said that at the beginning of the year we had one million five hundred thousand shares right and then you always need to keep up to date with the movement of shares what is happening are we selling them or are we buying them back very important so here they're saying that on the 1st of November 2013, the company issued a further 300,000 shares at 420 cents each, um, which means that the issued shares increased by 300,000. Okay. Now you need to check if there's any repurchase that was done so that you can see for how many shares did we have at the end of the year. On the 1st of May 2014, they're saying, the company bought back 50,000 shares at 460 each. So which means the number of shares that were issued to the public decreased. So we're going to say minus uh, 50,000. And then it will give us the final amount of shares that we need to think about when this final in uh, bargain, when the final dividends of 9 cent per share was declared. Okay. And then here they say a final dividend of 9 cent per share was declared the board back shares were not entitled to a final dividend and this makes sense to us because if somebody we bought back some shares it doesn't make sense for us to pay those people even though they are no longer shareholders so let's get the balance of the shares that were available at the end of the year so one million five hundred thousand plus three hundred thousand of the new issued shares and then we buy back uh, 50,000 shares then we are left with 1,750,000 shares in the market so which means whenever we declare dividends we are going to declare them on these shares at the end of the year so for each and every share that is available here we only declared 9 cent per share so which means um it's more like 9 over 100 but you need to show your calculations so here you are going to say um, 1,750,000 multiply by 0 0.09, which is the same as uh, 9 over 100. We can also try it like that and see if it will make sense. So 
multiply by 9 divided by 100 it is giving us 1 million 157,500 now you need to remember that whenever this shares were declared we were not paying them we were just promising so if we are promising it means our liabilities are increasing but remember what the matching principle says to us it says that the incomes of this year should be matched with the expenses of this year which is the reason why we are including this as part of our ordinary share dividend so which means that we are going to debit um ordinary share dividends and then we credit um shareholders for dividends So if we have credited it it means that we are owing shareholders money for those shares that we have declared we did not pay them we just promised them and then from there what you're going to do you're going to close off this account because it is an expense account so we're going to just add this and then get the total and take it to the appropriation so which means that if ordinary share dividends has been credited by appropriation appropriation will be debited by ordinary share dividends with the total so let's see how this will work um 210,000 plus 157,500 we are getting 367,500 so which means the total here will be 367,500 and also the credit side it's supposed to be equal to 3,500. And then the reason why we are transferring this to appropriation is because we're using off this expense account. In accounting, we know it as offsetting. So I hope that this was more beneficial for you in helping you uh, to prepare for your project. If you have any question, don't forget to ask me by leaving uh your questions on the comment section thank you shalom